happy I can be here at Clark. This is my second night in a row, and uh, you guys have something special going on here. Uh, what I've noticed is your students have a lot of heart.
and that you are part of something that carries with it both distinction and responsibility. Our accomplishments are meaningless if they do not have a positive impact on others. I quote the great Jackie Robinson who said, a life is not important except in the impact it has on other lives. So I want to challenge you this evening. Consider the ways that you can impact other lives. You are in an incredibly blessed position. You live in the most wealthy country on the planet, and you have at your disposal more resources than the vast majority of humankind throughout history. As a young person, you have something more valuable than you realize, purity of heart. I want you to use that as an asset to change the world for the better, starting with your own local community. So you might be wondering, how can I get involved? Well, I'm here to tell you about what we built to help make serving here in San Antonio simple. The organization is called Summer Service SOS. And here's how it all started. Let me set the scene for you. I was teaching in a dingy portable building at Indians Middle School. It's a low-income, predominantly Hispanic uh, serving school just down the road. Even had a, a leak in the ceiling when it would rain, it would, it would drip, and we had to put a bucket down so that we catch the rain. But, you know, we always found a way to make the, the room comfortable Make it ours. And we had a really good, solid classroom culture. One day, one of my students, Julie, she came up to my desk and she noticed a brochure with a picture of a famous landmark. And she curiously asked, Sir, what's that? It was a picture of the Eiffel Tower. Can you take this? She asked with enthusiasm in her eyes. The class was eavesdropping on our conversation at this point. I explained to her what it was, how it was located in Paris, showed her on a map where it was, and how district policies. I might make it a little hard to take a field trip to France. <laughs> Her demeanor immediately deflated. She replied, I guess we can never go. And I was saddened to see how unattainable the idea of travel abroad was for her and the other students in the classroom. I explained, no, it is possible to go. And even something I, as a teacher, could potentially organize. I thought that'd be the end of it, but no, the whole class erupted in excitement. <laughs> take this, take this. All of a sudden, a boring day in school for some of these students turned into the most exciting day ever. I knew I was onto something. I went home, I told my wife about what happened with my students that day. She looked at me and she said, Honey, you need to take those kids to see the world. I was so excited about it. And the next day, I went and talked to my school administrators. I told them what I wanted to do. And they told me, because of district policy, I couldn't lead students on trips during any school capacity. If I wanted to do this, I'd have to do it on my own. Pursue all responsibility and risk. So that's what I did. <laughs> I founded Sunrise Service, SOS, a nonprofit dedicated to building global citizen leaders with students right here in San Antonio through year round community service right here at home and summer travel around the world. Our youth need these opportunities to see the world through their own eyes. Today, children are practically born with a smart device in their hands. They're being raised to interact with technology, and that invariably affects how they think. This technology has allowed them to learn about the world, to an extent. Yet, while technology has enabled people around the globe to connect, it has also been used to divide people, to promulgate extreme ideologies and radicalization. It is not enough for us to know the world merely through a web browser. We cannot delude ourselves into thinking we can simply close our borders, put up a privacy curtain, and withdraw from the world. Therefore, we must seek to understand our world better. And for this, there is no substitute for people-to-people -people exchange in order to break down barriers between people and cultures. I founded SOS to get students off their screens and out into the world, to learn, serve, and explore their world, and indeed shape it to be a better world. Many of the students we serve are from underprivileged backgrounds and have never even flown on a plane before, let alone gone outside of 410 or 1604. Since 2014, when we started, SOS has been making a difference in our community by serving more than 10,000 hours, 10,000, with more than 30 local agencies right here in San Antonio, and we've taken over 400 travelers and county on life-changing journeys to Peru, Italy, Greece, Costa Rica, England, France, China, Japan, Spain, Australia, New Zealand, Belize, with many more trips planned for the future. We met with students in our sister cities around the world and practiced citizen diplomacy by meeting with their city officials and welcoming them to our city. We even traveled to Spain last year, 2018, for our tricentennial and had the honor to have met the king and queen of Spain, 
during their visit to San Antonio. Mm -hmm. Through this initiative so far, we've taken a group of 30 students to Wuxi, our sister city in China, 30 students to Kumamo, our sister city in Japan, and I'm proud to announce that this summer we'll be taking 32 students to Darmstadt, Germany, our newest sister city, thanks to your very own Frau Marian Torres. <laughs>
I'm encouraged about the future. And I believe that through the work we're doing, we're making the world a better place and strengthening youth to become the leaders we all wish to see. Thank you very much.